So today I'm bringing you guys episode 3 of Matt's Mailbox. Now it's been a while since I did one of these but a lot of you guys have been asking me to bring back this series and continue with these videos. So if you would like to get one of your questions answered, don't forget to leave it in the comments below of this video. Now I did have some Battlefield 4 dog tags to give away. I have selected some winners for those already so check your YouTube messages. You may have actually won a pair and don't even know it yet. But I do still have some to give away, so I might be giving those to people who give me the best questions in this series. So if you have some really interesting questions and want to win yourself a pair of Battlefield 4 dog tags, leave your questions in the comments below. Now on top of that, if that is not enough, I have just passed 18,000 subscribers. So I also have some Battlefield 4 gunner glasses, some Battlefield 4 hoodies and some Battlefield 4 books to give away as well thanks to EA. So if you want to be in a chance of winning one of those, stay tuned to the channel. I do have some China Rising videos coming next week and a chance for you guys to win some pretty cool Battlefield 4 prizes. So let's go ahead and jump into today's episode. Now the first question comes from Battlefield Daily and he asks, what are your thoughts on some kind of Vietnam expansion pack for Battlefield 4? It's highly requested by a large proportion of the Battlefield community, and I don't think it's an impossibility considering how successful the Vietnam DLC was for Battlefield Bad Company 2. If we were to see such a DLC, it could be released a while after the premium expansion packs and it wouldn't be included in the premium membership. What are your thoughts? Now this is something I have touched on before. For me, Battlefield Bad Company 2 Vietnam was one of the best DLCs I think I've ever experienced. Now of course in Bad Company 2 the way the DLCs were ran was very different to Battlefield 3. There was a VIP system where if you bought the game brand new you spent that extra money on the game rather than buying a pre-owned version really help out the developers a little bit. You got treated like a VIP, you got given a code which gave you all of the DLCs for free and I think that was a really great system. It gave you the incentive to buy the game brand new. Now of course I can understand why in Battlefield 3 they couldn't continue that system. Battlefield 3 was a much larger title, a much bigger budget game that was trying to compete with Call of Duty so they really couldn't give away those DLCs for free. But of course with Bad Company 2 that system I think worked really well but the Vietnam map pack was the one DLC you did have to pay for. Now it still was very cheap, it was only £10 and probably the best £10 I've ever spent. Now what made the Vietnam DLC so great but also ended up being its downfall was it was practically a brand new game. You could only access these maps by backing out to the start menu and picking to go on Bad Company 2 Vietnam. Now once you were on this section you had Vietnam music, you had 70s, 60s style music, you had all the different artwork and in this game mode of course you got four brand new maps all set in Vietnam, you got new vehicles, new tanks, new aircraft, all new weaponry so it did feel like a brand new game. But this also ended up being its downfall. Because these maps weren't in regular rotation and you had to dedicate yourself to these one servers playing Vietnam, it wasn't long before these maps became very unpopular because there were only the four you could play. If they had integrated these maps into the regular game and you could switch and choose between these maps and the regular maps of the game, I think it would have lasted for a lot longer. So if we were to see a new DLC, a period DLC, come into Battlefield 4 from be it Vietnam or even World War 2, World War 1, any kind of different time period, I think for it to be successful, the main thing it has to do is be integrated with the rest of the game. So if DICE were to bring out a DLC like this for Battlefield 4, I agree with you, maybe it shouldn't be part of premium. I myself wouldn't mind spending that extra 10 to 15 pound to really make sure it was a quality DLC and we were seeing fresh brand new material because of course with Battlefield 4 now it's becoming more and more common we are seeing the same stuff churned out again of course Second Assault is four maps we've already seen in Battlefield 3 followed up by weapons we have had in Battlefield 3 before China Rising again has weapons we've already had in Battlefield 3 and one of those four maps is one we've seen in Battlefield 2 so it's becoming more and more common now that we get less fresh brand new material so if it meant paying a little more maybe 10 to 15 pounds to get a completely new DLC maybe from Vietnam I would love to see World War 2 I spoke about this in a video before a World War 2 DLC I would love World War 2 games were really popular on the old gen consoles, PlayStation 2, maybe even the early days of PlayStation 3, but really good quality first person online World War 2 games are something we don't see very common these days on next gen and on PC. So I would love to see DICE's Battlefield 4 take on a World War 2, maybe a Normandy themed DLC. So moving on to question 2 today which comes in from Battle Rush FPS and I picked this question because it's staying on the same theme that we're speaking about here all about DLCs and his question is The DLC Second Assault is already released. 
China Rising and Naval Strike are not far away. The last two DLCs, Dragon's Teeth and Final Stand, are coming summer 2014. What would you like to see in them? Now for me, one of the most important aspects of any DLC, no matter what the game, as I just mentioned in the previous question, is all about original content. Now don't get me wrong, I don't mind seeing some reimagined maps, some reimagined weapons, if they really were the most popular in the previous game. But it's definitely not something I want to see becoming a regular occurrence. Now towards the end of the life cycle of Battlefield 3 Premium, I really start to think we saw DICE step outside of their comfort zone and think outside of the box with the Endgame and Aftermath DLC. They really did bring a fresh pace and a new lease of life into a very old game. Of course, they came out towards the end of the life cycle of Battlefield 3. And for me, they really did prolong that game's playtime because they did freshen up the game's playstyle. Of course, we saw new game modes like Scavenger, which I thought were a great addition to the game. They got you using guns you would never normally use. They made you switch up your playstyle. We also saw map designs that were very fresh. We hadn't seen anything like that in Battlefield 3 before. And not to forget, we also start to see the very early aspects of Levolution. We had earthquakes and different little features taking place in the map. So really, for those two final DLCs, Dragon's Teeth and Final Stand, I just want to see DICE really take a step outside the box, take a leap of faith, do something a little bit more brash, a little bit more bold, as we saw with the final two DLCs in Battlefield 3. Hell, even in Final Stand, why not a Levolution like a nuclear weapon that destroys the map, or something, just something really different, who cares if it may seem a bit extreme, just something a little bit more outside the box, and a little bit more forward thinking than we do see with just repeating the maps we've seen before, the new game modes that we have actually already seen, in Battlefield 3, you know, liven it up a little bit, do something a little bit crazy. That's something I would really appreciate DICE doing towards the end of Battlefield 4. Again, it would prolong the life of the game. Towards the end of that time cycle, as people are getting a little bit bored, do something to really grab their attention and their imagination again. So that's all the questions I have time for in today's episode of Matt's Mailbox. If you did enjoy it and want to support the video, don't forget to smash that like button. It does help me out a lot. And don't forget to leave your questions for the next episode in the comments below. You could be in with a chance of winning yourself some Battlefield 4 dog tags. But in the meantime guys, thank you for watching and I will see you soon.